So when you've got your image drawn um, and you're happy with it and you're ready to transfer your image to the plate, um, you're going to want to think about how it looks. Um, so when we, if we were to transfer this image to our plate right now, um, it would print in the reverse. Um, so it's a good idea to hold your image up to a mirror. Um, sometimes when we draw things um, facing the way we're drawing them, um, when we reverse them, there tends to be like a little bit of awkwardness um, or, you know, depending on which direction I would like this woman to be facing, um, you know, it all depends because it is going to print in the reverse. Um, if you decide, oh, I actually want my image to print exactly as I've drawn it, you're going to want to reverse your image. So one thing you can do is scan it in, bring it into Photoshop, flip your image and print it out again. Or you can trace your image um, onto the back of your paper um, and then transfer it to your plate and then it will print um, just the way that you've drawn it. Um, so you can, um, if you're at home, you can hold your image up to a window and trace it using the light coming through. Or if you're in the print studio, you can use the light table. The switch is underneath. There we go. And so now I can see my image. And I'm just going to trace all the major lines that I will need to transfer my image to the plate. All right, so when you have the information transferred um, onto the back of your paper, you're ready to transfer your image to your plate with hard ground that hopefully is dry. And again, it's sometimes a good idea to make sure that you know exactly where your image is going to fall on the plate. There's nice even borders. I'm just going to lightly draw these in so that I know where to put my paper down. All right. So you're welcome to just start scribing directly onto the plate if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, I never do. So I always like to transfer my original drawing. And here I have a small piece of newsprint with red iron oxide on it. Um, and this is what I'm going to use to transfer this image to my plate. Um, so I'm going to flip over my newsprint with the red iron oxide. I'm gonna tape it down to my work area so it doesn't move while I'm tracing. And I like to leave a little flap so I can peek under and make sure that I'm getting all the information. And then I'm going to place my image on top, line up that little border that I just made so that my image will fall on my plate where I want it to. All right, and then I'm gonna tape that down as well. Now, using my pencil, I'm gonna trace over these lines and they are going to press into areas of iron oxide um, and transfer my drawing to my plate.
So when you feel like you've transferred the majority of your lines, you can remove your paper and you'll see that very faintly, but um, your image is there. And try not to like, you know, rub your hand around it because it is just powder and it will come off. Um, but now you're ready to start tracing um, over your lines with the scribe. And so unlike dry point, you don't have to press very hard. And again, you can create areas of value by lines that are close together um, through hatching and cross hatching. But I'm also going to show you how uh, to do aquatint, will, which will create these areas of value. Um, but you can use them in combination. I like to have some lines that denote value uh, coupled with aquatint as well. Um, and also, um, as you're scribing onto your plate, try not to um, create really open areas. So if you're creating um, an area of value, like here, you can see maybe a little bit that the copper plate is exposed and those lines are gonna etch. Um, the acid is gonna do all the work for us to etch those lines. And just try not to like scratch or like remove a large area of the hard ground because If we were to etch that, it's gonna cause what's called open biting. Um, and it's just gonna make a really big hole in your plate. And um, it's gonna print light gray rather than a nice dark black, which is probably what you were wanting. So just try to create areas of value um, by putting lines super close together. And then once you've scribed in all the uh, lines in your plate, you'll be ready to put it in the acid bath. When you have scribed all the lines onto your plate that you want to etch, you are ready to etch the plate. So you can see how it's a little bit shiny. You can see the copper underneath the ground. Um, and when we put it into the ferric chloride, it's going to eat these lines away um, so that we can print them. So once I had finished um, with my lines, you can always, you know, if you accidentally drew somewhere that you don't want lines, um, you can always go in with a little bit of hard ground or stop out, which is just a thicker hard ground, and paint over the areas that you don't want to etch. I also recommend um, putting a little bit of hard ground or stop out on the edges and allowing it to dry or putting it on the hot plate um, so that it dries before you etch your plate. And this is so that those nice edges that you worked so hard on um, don't get eaten away um, so we have to redo them later. Once you've completed all those steps, then you're ready to etch. So first and foremost, don't forget to turn on the ventilation fan. And then you're gonna wanna make a tape tail. So I usually pull out about 16 inches of tape and leaving a little bit at the end, I fold it onto itself. This way I can attach that sticky part on the end to the back of the plate to make sure it's nice and secure so that it doesn't fall off when it's in the acid bath. And then I'm ready to put it in the acid. I've done a couple tests on this test chart to show um, different uh, like types of lime that you can get the longer you keep it in the acid. Um, but I generally, as a rule of thumb, like to put it in for around 40 minutes and then take the plate out look at the progress of the etch um, and then proceed. And you wanna make sure that you know your ground is holding up, um, nothing's chipping away. Um, you can also stop out for different line weights. So if you want a really light line in certain parts, you can put it in for say 20 minutes, take out the plate, 
um, stop out certain areas and then put it back in. Um, but for now, I'm gonna put it in for about 40 minutes and then take it out and check to see how it's going. Make sure you wear gloves when you're working around the acid. This stuff won't hurt you, but it does sting a bit and it smells really bad and it tends to stain. So I'm gonna take a clothespin, lower my plate into the bath until it's completely submerged, fold my tape bit over the edge and fasten it with a clothespin. Now I'm gonna set a timer for 40 minutes um, and come back and check on it after 40 minutes. All right, so it's been about 40 minutes and I'm gonna check on my plate. Even though I'm pretty sure I want like a really dark saturated line, so I'm, it's probably gonna have to be in for another like 20 minutes to a half an hour. Um, but I just wanna look and see that my ground is holding up um, and that my lines are nice and crisp. So I'm going to slowly pull my plate out of the etching bath. I'm gonna let it drip off as much as possible to get that acid off. And then I'm gonna bring it over to the sink for a rinse. Once all the acid is rinsed off of it, I'm going to dry it off with some paper towel. And check it out. So what I'm looking for is that the lines are starting to etch. So if they're not shiny anymore, that means they're starting to etch. And I can see that there's some areas where they're still shiny. Um, so I'm gonna put it back in for another 20 minutes and see what happens. Um, my ground is holding up nicely, so that's good. Um, but I'm gonna put it in for a little bit longer. I just wanted to make sure that everything was okay. Nothing was going awry. I'm going to put it back in for another, let's say, 20 minutes. So it's been 20 minutes. Put my gloves back on. Carefully pull plate out of the acid bath. Let it drip back in. Once most of it's off, I'm gonna rinse it again. Another thing you can do once your plate's been cleaned off, if you want to check the line, is take your scribe, put it into one of those lines, and try to move your scribe around just to see how deep those lines are. So this is looking pretty good. Yep. So that's been in there for an hour. Lines are looking nice and deep. Um, and once you're happy with your lines, you can take off the hard ground um, and pull a proof.